questions and answers. <coughs> So just to start, and maybe Mr. Mohammed and Mr. Akupe, you can start with this one. Uh, we're roughly 10 months out from the elections right now, and I wonder if you can share with us your perspective on the state of preparations, both internally as a party um, and externally in terms of the national level preparations. And we'll, we'll use that kind of as an opening statement. Where are we in this election process? If when you speak, you could press the button here. So why don't we start with uh, uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed? Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Well, at the party level, that's the APC, you'll know that over this weekend, the party started its um, World Congresses all over the country. And next week, Saturday, it would continue with the local government congress. And then on the 23rd of April, there will be state congresses. And by the 24th of May, there will be the national convention. Well, these congresses and convention are coming up now because, as you know, the APC did not become a broker party until the 31st of July, 2013. And within that time, what the interim executive has done has been to put together the party by embarking on a nationwide registration of its members. And now we are going to congresses and conventions to elect officials and delegates for the party at all levels. Ahead of that, on Thursday, March 6, uh, the party also unveiled its roadmap to a new Nigeria which detailed the party's priorities in fixing the widespread feelings of the previous government since 1999 in order to bring hope and circle to the long suffering to the people of Nigeria. This manifesto, which we launched on the 6th of March, was prepared after a public opinion survey, perhaps the largest ever carried out in Nigeria, which was contracted by a party with the sole intention of determining areas in which Nigerians will want their government to focus upon. The results were even more revealing than we thought, because in that survey, 50% of Nigerians said things were not going the right direction, as against 24% who said things were going in a good direction. That survey also revealed that 60% Nigerians said they want the government to focus more on job creations. And 58% said the president was not doing enough to create jobs. While 59% in that survey said that the president was not doing a good job fighting corruption. This led us to believe that job creation, the fight against corruption, and insecurity are the greatest challenges Nigerians are facing today, among others. Of course, these are some of the issues that will shape the 2015 elections. Concerning our preparations for elections at national level, we believe that not much has been done to engender confidence among the populace that the elections will be different from the, from the previous ones, especially in 2011, in terms of credibility of the process. We believe in the, in the enactment of necessary laws that will make the elections free, fair, and credible. For, exa for example, we believe the Independent National Electoral Commission must decide that we would use a method of, that we are going to adopt a voting based on the biometric data system, which we believe to be the only antidote to rigging and election manipulation. Also, necessary amendments to, be, to electoral law have yet to be carried out, and this is key in ensuring credible polls. Our party also believes there should be a tribunal to summarily try electoral officers 
and send a message to all that to all that rigging, manipulation, and violence will not be tolerated during these you know, the coming elections. Thank you very much, and thank you for um, sticking within time. It's great. Um, let's turn to um, Mr. Akupe um, with the same question. Thank you very much, and um, good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> I have a problem here. The question you ask us is, we are just about 10 months away from the elections. <clears throat> and the state of preparations internally as a party and externally in terms of national level preparations. I have not come here to discuss politics in terms of uh, performance in terms of what the president is doing and I don't think that is why the CSI has invited us. Basically my understanding of this is as it is usually American you guys are interested in credible elections. You are interested in free and fair platforms and it is a fact that in Africa and in Nigeria, we haven't really gotten there yet. We cannot compare any of our elections with what we have done. And I think in order to help the process, that is why you brought us here. We have reservations about discussing our internal affairs abroad. But we honor this invitation because we believe the American people and agencies in America want to help Africa, and in Nigeria in particular. Alaji Lai Mohammed must restrict himself to the questions that have been asked. He must not, under any circumstances, cast aspersion on the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and if he does, then we will change, he knows me, we will change the theme of this discussion and we will change the mode of this discussion. But for now, I will let it go. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good. Why don't you tell us what so you, I will do, how I, you I'll, I'll, go yeah. I'll go to that yeah. now. Yeah, now, <clears throat> in terms of preparation, in terms of preparation, in Nigeria, really speaking, the organization that is empowered to undertake this is INEC. And we believe that we've got a good man at the helm of affairs. The elections that Alaji Lai Mohammed discredited in the 2011 elections was perhaps one of the best elections ever held on Nigerian soil. I remember Johnny Kassin commenting on this election. Johnny Kassin is a respected person in this society. And I doubt whether the American people will not take his statement credibly. It's not just Johnny Carson. Many uh, 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 foreign uh, observers passed comments and passed that election. There's no election. Even elections that were held in the United States had their own issues. We remember the Florida matter. I remember the Nixon issue. So many, you know, but by and large, if the average performance is such that it does, you know, the better aspect of it does not affect the essence of the election. Usually, reasonable men will pass such an election as being fair, free and fair. If I could just say, um, 800 people did die in the aftermath of that election. Correct. That, you know, that was not because of the election. That was because there are desperate people in Nigeria who went and incited unfortunate, you know, citizens. Yeah to go on a rampage, and that is what happened. That is our problem in the country. It was not the process of election that killed them. The election took place, it was free and fair, but because some people, you know, here in, in, in America, and I've always said it, you know, for an election to be okay, you know, the winner must clearly, fairly emerge, and the loser must accept. If the, if the winner clearly emerges, and the loser is a spoiled sport, what can you do about that? 
This is what we should be discussing here. You know, we all should cooperate and ensure that even though there may be inadequacies in the system, provided the political parties are committed to true democracy. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria said it in 2011, that he would rather lose the election and go back to Turkey as a president in Nigeria who lost election than to rig the election. And my man did here, I saw the president before I came here, what he told me to tell the American people is that he has not decided to run and that he is not desperate for power. And evidence has shown that. In, the, in 2011, just a minute, ma'am, just a minute, just a minute, ma'am. In the 2011 election, in the 2011 election, the ruling party lost several states, including the entire states, six states in the southwest, Mr. and some states, yes. We're going to have time. As we said in the instructions before, we would give each side five minutes to Thank respond. Thank you. Uh, that's okay. That's all right. We'll, you'll, we'll be able to come back to some of these questions no uh, and issues in the question and answer. Um, so we, we haven't gotten quite a sense of where you think these elections stand, these election preparations stand right now. The major, if you could major part of the preparations that need to be done will be done by INEC. As for us, you know, uh, the APC is a very new party. They have problems with uh, manifest to world elections. We don't have that kind of problem. We don't have that okay. kind of problem. This is an established party, you know, deeply rooted, the only party that you find anywhere and everywhere in Nigeria. Well, I'm not coming here to lie to you. This is the truth. Okay. We don't have that kind of problem. Okay, thank you. They, they uh, have... as, as you said, we're not going to cast aspersions. Correct. Thank right. you. Um, Uh, I, I, we'd like to get back to some of the specifics, particularly in, 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 in the, the government's role in this. Um, Mr. Mohammed or uh, uh, Senator Ojudu, yes, um, can you explain how your party is going to select the best possible candidates to represent you at the elections? How will you ensure that the party primary process is credible, transparent, and democratic? Thank you very much. Uh, let me starts by saying that um, the world is one single humanity and whatever affects the people of Nigeria affects the rest of the world. And I believe today that there is nothing happening in Nigeria that is not known to the world. It's only in those dark ages that you could say whatever is Nigeria should be said to Nigeria. I remember coming here some 20 years ago, again, you know, under this kind of uh, situation. And the concern then was that if there is a problem in Nigeria, it's going to affect virtually all parts of the world. If Nigeria throws out just five million uh, refugees. refugees, it's going to wipe out the, the whole of West, West Africa. And I know quite uh, thousands of Nigeria who are carrying visas or, you know, uh, or, you know, your cards that were allowed to enter into America. So we cannot you know, be an island on our own. Nigeria, whatever happened in Nigeria, we affect you as it will affect Nigerians. So let me just say that we need to discuss frankly here today so that the rest of the world will notice in Nigeria and how to come to our assistance. In terms of how, you know, we are preparing to ensure that the credible candidates do emerge, as he said, some months ago, we carried out registration of our party members and it was a very credible, very clear and open thing. Everybody queued and were registered into our party. And we have this data is available on our website and everywhere. People can access it. We are having our congresses now by May. We are going to have a national congress where we are going to elect our leaders, though we have now our interim leaders. And when the time comes, people are going to be called to signify their interest in contesting, you know, for the president, the vice president, governors and all of that. And again, we are going to invite the rest of the world to come and observe what we are going to do. We are going to ensure that, you know, whoever is interested, we address the Congress of our party. They will address people of our country. They will address the rest of the world. Make their ideology known, make their programs known, and they are going to be asked questions. You know, we don't do politics of big manism in our party. People are going to be subjected to questioning. And that was why I, you know, as a senator, you know, had to uh, propose a bill that we should set up a debate commission in our country so that anybody contesting for any public office must be made to go through public debate with his opponents. 
Because in the past, what we have heard is that people are called to come and debate running into election, and they will run away, only for them to come and debate themselves. Have you ever heard where a candidate debates against himself? You know, that has happened in Nigeria. Or call a, pop, a, a popular musician to come and ask him questions on national television, and that is considered as a debate. This we intend not to happen, and we are going to call on the rest of the world. For us to have credible leadership in Nigeria, you must ask whoever is going to rule us to be ready to subject himself to, to be questioned by the people of the country. We are going to set that example in our party, and we expect that when the general election comes, people who are going to contest against our candidate must also be ready to debate our candidate. I mean, the last election in America, even my 10-year-old daughter, you know, I mean, was always in front of the TV, watching the debates in, Africa, in America, and he, he became so informed about the issues involved. Why then shouldn't our own leader be ready to talk to us? Tell us, how are you going to solve problem of insecurity? How are you going to provide jobs for the unemployed? You probably must have heard about hundreds of thousands of Nigerians who were called to the stadium, now not to any hall to write exam, to the national stadium as if we were going for World Cup, you know, World Cup final. They were called in there to come and undergo tests. More than 20 of them died in the process. That will show you what we are going through, you know, in terms of unemployment. People are going to be asked questions about that. What are you going to do to provide jobs for our school leavers? What are you going to do to ensure that people are not being killed every day? Just yesterday, 120 Nigerians were killed in, uh, in Sanfara. Every day you continue to read stories about Nigeria, people being killed. It is not Afghanistan, for God's sake. This is Nigeria. Problem of insecurity, unemployment, corruption. You keep hearing of $20 billion missing, $39 billion missing everywhere. We are going to ask questions about those things. So, as, as, uh, uh, you know, as we move on to the elections, you must insist that there is openness, there is transparency. People must you know, be ready to subject themselves to be questioned and being examined so that the right leaders could be chosen in Nigeria. Thank you very much. I think the idea of a national presidential debate is an excellent one. We'd be happy to host it here at CSIS, too. <laughs> Although I don't know if I'm going to moderate that. <laughs> So, to the PDP, and I'll ask Mr. Coupe to designate, um, explain how your party will select the best possible candidates to represent, um, and how you ensure that the primary process is transparent and credible. Jennifer, um, Fred is going to take this question, but um, we have to turn this, uh, this discussion away from the conversation of the deaf. Is that people or the blind? The question you asked the, the, the distinguished senator was, how is his party preparing for primaries? How that went into and cascaded into all sorts. You know, we must change this discussion. Well, Otherwise, it will become a conversation of the deaf. I also can pretend to be deaf. Well, uh, I'm not let deaf, just say, so let Fred take the question. Well, let me, let me respond a bit, because I think you may have missed the introduction in this. This is really to get the two parties to tell not what the other party is doing, what the failures are, but what they're doing in terms of preparing. What is your personal role and what is your party's role, ensuring that these elections are transparent, free, credible, and peaceful? And I think, you know, the idea of having a candidate's debate in the primary and, and follow on is was his response. That's the APC strategy. The APC, what is the PDP the APC strategy? has antecedents. None of the antecedents has ever debated anything anywhere in Nigeria. I'd like you to answer Please for the PDP. Ahead. 